Tudor Arab brands that have impressed me a lot over the past few years. I just love everything they do. I love the style of their watches, the build, the heft of them, the masculinity, the way they mix vintage-inspired design with modern. I've had quite a few at this point, the Black Bay Heritage, the Panda Chrono. I've even had the Harrods and the Black Bay 58, which is a great watch, but way too small on me. But I think I finally found the perfect one. I've been searching around, going through different watches from Tudor for a while. So I'm going to do an unboxing for you guys. Old Timeless Watch Channel style with a bottle of wine and even a support act just to get you all warmed up. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Oshin O'Malley. Before I get into anything, what am I wearing on the wrist? You probably already know from the intro. I am wearing the Black Beauty, the Espresso Rolex GMT Master II. Tell me that's not maybe the perfect Rolex. A little loosey-goosey tonight for some reason. It's getting a little bit cooler here in Venice. All right, so I'm going to show you guys uh, my favorite Tudor that I've found thus far. I may have come to the end of the rainbow and finally found the perfect Tudor for me. I absolutely adore this watch, but as always, I like to drag these things out, open a beer or a, pour yourself a whiskey or something and sit back and enjoy a little chat about watches and a slow unboxing. If you're not interested in any of this other stuff and you just want to get straight to the Tudor, I'll leave a timestamp in this uh, little thingy below. You can fast forward to it. But for the rest of you guys who want to sit back and hang out for a bit, let me show you guys some interesting stuff. So first off, what wine am I going to have? This is an Amaral de Bechevel from the Bechevel uh, Chateau there on the left bank of the Gironde in Bordeaux. Bechevel gets its name from uh, the lowering of the sails. You see, the duke that owned the chateau there is a very, very fancy chateau. In fact, a lot of people in the Bordeaux region call it the Versailles of Bordeaux because it's really, really fancy and kind of wide and long, low. But the duke there wanted respect from everybody in the region. He was so rich and powerful. Of course, his gardens went all the way to the river there. So he would see the boats as they went by and they would have to lower their sails. Now, this is not Chateau de Bechevel, the main one, which usually costs around 200 bucks and it's a fourth growth. It's like a big deal. This is their second wine, Amaral de Bechevel. And I've actually never had it. I found it in Vienna and a nice wine store there while I was there last week. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Now that is what you want to see. Oh baby, that blood red and no seepage. If you see the wine going up the cork, you would begin to worry about a seepage, which can lead to oxidation over the years, but that is perfect. That means the bottle has been resting on its side for a very, very long time. Keeping the cork a little moist from the wine keeps the cork plump which of course seals the wine even better. Sitting the wine upright like that in storage, you run the risk of the cork drying out a little and then letting a little air in, which would be a disaster. Very um, plummy cherry color on that. Not any age at all. Of course, it's a 2019. Yeah, I mean, it's got Saint-Julien notes, a little minerality and uh, kind of deep cassis, as they call it, uh, which would be black currant, I think. Wow, there's big vanilla notes coming out now. It's just been opened a minute or two. This is actually my first bit of red wine in over three weeks because I haven't been drinking much lately. I mean, you can tell the structure is there. I mean, they know what they're doing, these guys. So let's get to a watch. As you guys know, I like to... Uh, Put a little support act in from a micro brand, give them a little promo, why not? Add a different price point to the main act. 
This time it is the Mirai from Nomadic. These guys are out of Belfast. This is their emerald green dive watch. This one is slightly different to the one I featured before because it has the date window. The one before was just a simple three-hander. So the date window version goes for about a hundred bucks more. I believe the no date is around a thousand nine ninety-nine in euros. Whereas this one's about 1100 sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, and 316L steel. That has a beautiful brushing to it. It looks like 904L steel to me. Lovely refraction there on the crystal. And some of the best loom I've ever seen in uh, micro brown watches, or even any watches for that matter. Their measurements are perfect. It's 40 mils diameter. In fact, it might be a, a hair over 40 mils uh, because it feels almost like a 41 sometimes on the wrist. 49 millimeters from lug to lug. And as you can see, a beautifully elegant 11.5 millimeters in thickness. It just adds so much to the elegance. I think watch brands should do everything they can to make their watches as slim as possible. Do you see the way the uh, bezel is really, really married to the, the case right there? There's another detail as well. If I do that, you can see that the uh, the lugs overhang the end link there a little bit, which I love. That's very vintage style. It's a Salida SW200 movement on the inside. Very, very popular movement these days. Rock solid, real Swiss workhorse movement. Fantastic stuff. Nothing to really look at. So there's no exhibition back or anything like that. No need for it with a dive watch. As you can see, the design is super simple, extremely legible. This is more legible than most watches I have that cost 10 times this. Hours, minutes, of course, and the date. And this wonderful, big, bright yellow seconds hand evoking imagery of the shipbuilding industry in belfast of course that's where titanic was built and indeed the nomadic which is uh, titanic's uh, little brother which is still parked right there in belfast so as you can see it just sits very very neatly on the wrist because it's so flat it just kind of hangs really nicely and i think because of that overhang with the lugs there's something uh, very comfy and cozy about the way it just kind of flops into position on the wrist. I'm perfectly fine with the uh, clasp in the uh, dead center because the watch seems to just want to sit in one position beautifully. And I mentioned the loom, so I got to show you. This is amazing. I don't know how they do this because normally with uh, micro brands, loom can be awful. You know, it's one of the spots where they where many of them uh, fall down. But this is some of the best loom I've ever seen on a watch, let alone a micro brand watch. Such a shiny and beautiful watch. Gotta say, very, very handsome. I really like these watches for a thousand bucks. You can't really go wrong. And I love that deep emerald green. It's just, uh, it's really, really luscious. Out in the sun, it lights up. It's quite like the, uh, the Rolex Hulk in that way. No Cyclops on the date, and I'm sure a lot of people are very happy about that. That kind of makes it a bit more like a sea dweller, right? Check them out, Nomadic Watches. They're making news up there in Belfast and uh, going from stride to stride. It's great to be able to follow a micro brand from kind of almost its inception to where it is now. They've really expanded things, getting great reviews and have a lot of fans out there in the kind of sub $2,000 uh, mark for, uh, for watches. Okay, getting ready for the main acts now. You know, Tudor are, they suit me a lot more than Rolex watches. I love my Rolex, but you know, Tudor kind of have that rugged vibe going on, you know, the ripped jeans, the five o'clock shadow and I love that they've come into their own they're no longer seen really as the as the poor man's Rolex or whatever people used to say years ago now Tudor have their own identity and in certain ways are kind of cooler than Rolex so this is the inner box here you've probably all seen these before it's very Rolex-esque but uh, after all they are Rolex or the sister brand to Rolex the second wine, a little bit like the Amaral de Bechevel, really significant brand, I think, at this point, being taken very, very seriously. In Geneva that time, the line was longer 
for Tudor at certain moments than it was even for Rolex. So Tudor are in a much more affordable bracket, really. Not everybody has 10,000 to spend on a Rolex. And even if you do, you might wind up on a wait list for years and maybe never even get it from Rolex themselves. You'll have to uh, bite the bullet and turn to the gray market. Whereas Tudor, even though there are certain watches that are weightless watches from Tudor, it's a lot less common. All right. So here we go. The Black Bay Chrono in steel and gold. A two-tone Tudor with a beautiful, deep, chocolatey aesthetic. Before we get to the watch, what else is in the box? They keep it pretty simple. Everything's just under the... Uh, under the watch, no big leaflets or anything. All the info's in here and the card. And this watch is from December 2022, so almost 2023. Fantastic. They re-released this watch in its uh, current design in 2019. It was based on the 2017 design, but this one's a little slimmer than those before. Uh, thickness has been a, uh, an ongoing issue with uh, Tudor. Uh, people really watching how thick the watches are. So what have we got? We've got a 41 millimeter diameter. Actually, it's a tiny bit more than 41. And it feels like a 42 or even 43. You'll see it when, when it's on my wrist. Lug to lug, it's 50 millimeters and 14.5 in height. So not a super slim watch, but you do have that box crystal there adding maybe an extra millimeter to the thickness and that adds a lot of kind of vintage feel to the watch but they have been known to have 15 or 15.5 millimeter uh, thick watches so really on the grand scale of things this is a relatively slender watch as Tudors go now the difference between this two-tone and maybe a Rolex two-tone is that uh, not everything is solid gold. So for example, the links here in the bracelet are wrapped gold. So it's a, it's a leaf of gold wrapped around the steel link. So if you do get a, a gash in it or a scratch, it's not going to reveal steel under, underneath it unless you went really, really deep. So essentially you're getting the same uh, look uh, but it's not uh, as weighty as full gold links would be. The end links on either side are solid gold. The rest of the links are wrapped gold. The bezel is actually a solid piece of gold with, of course, an aluminum insert. These pushers are also real gold all the way through, but the crown is not. The crown is actually covered, so it's a steel crown covered in gold. That's how they've worked it here. The dial is super detailed. It's a matte texture. And of course, those plate shaped sub dials with a little bit of uh, guilloche in the center almost looks like an old vinyl record. Really, really nice. And I love that they put a combo of the pre 1968 and post 68 uh, logos. So there's the post one right there uh, from Tudor. There's the little shield. And then you have the pre-1968 logo here. So they're representing both uh, periods of their, their legacy as a brand. That dash of red is really nice as well on the dial there, the text, and of course on the chrono hand, which I will now engage. This is a modified B01. So that means it's a vertical clutch column wheel chronograph. So it engages and stops and re-engages in a very, very... A smooth and precise way. There's no jumping or any kind of instability to the uh, to the pushers at all. So you could actually leave the chrono engaged if you'd like because of that vertical clutch. It's not going to uh, put any more wear and tear on the movement at all. So I tend to like to do that myself uh, just to see something moving around the dial so I know the watch is alive. You know how it is. One thing I love about Tudors over Rolex is just the size of everything here. Like this crown is just a monster. It's so easy for my big stupid fingers to manipulate. The winding of the watch is just beautiful and heavy. I don't feel like I'm holding a little toothpick like I do sometimes with other watches. This is beautiful action. 
plenty of grip, no pain involved. These watches are built for my kind of scale. Very, very slab side to the watch head there. As you can see, it's a big monster. It's like a sea dweller or something. And uh, you do have the faux rivets on the bracelet. Honestly, they don't bother me at all, but people get very annoyed about them. Even though it is somewhat of a blingy watch being in two-tone, they've managed to maintain a kind of a Tudor ruggedness to it. If you'll notice, even with the center links that are in gold, they're not shiny, they're not high polish. They're satinized. And it adds this kind of soft subtlety and a maturity to the to the look of the watch. And of course, you have the big monster clasps. I'm not sure there's any better clasp out there in the watch world. Tudor clasps are beasts. Now, unfortunately, there's no glide lock or easy link extension or anything. You're going to need a, a toothpick or a tool to uh, extend that. Nothing on the case back, as you can see, just closed up, which I have no problem with. There's no reason to really see the B01 movement in there. It's not particularly gorgeous looking movement, uh, even though it is column wheel and uh, vertical clutch and all that. It's not about that with Tudor. It's not about displaying the horology. These are uh, just rugged, uh, beastly, uh, manly watches. There's no time to be sitting there staring at the movement, if you know what I mean. <laughs> The snowflake hands, of course, some people have an issue with. I don't, especially in this case. Now, I mentioned before that I had the um, uh, the Panda Chronograph, a watch that everybody was after, and I made some nice videos about it too. And it is a gorgeous watch, but I had terrible trouble reading the time on that watch. Sometimes in certain light, I found myself trying to catch the light on the hand so I could actually read the time. That's counterintuitive to me. It makes no sense. With this watch, it's very, very high contrast. I don't have any issues reading the time at all. Another small detail is that the loomed indices there are slightly patinaed, a little bit of faux patina going on there. It's off, it's an off-white, like a, a kind of sandy ivory white like an old page and the date wheel has the same colored white as well it's not a stark or silvery white it's a little bit browner and it adds to the whole kind of chocolatey goodness of this watch the timing sub dial on the right actually does 45 minutes as opposed to 30 minutes which is what's seen normally with a b01 movement and i just love those small punches of red on the dial and on the uh, chrono hand there just a big, beautiful beast. Really suits the larger guy, the beefier wrist, and makes a Daytona just look like a little button. <laughs> I love it, man. Retail on this watch is about 7,800 euros, but I've seen some deals on uh, Chrono 24 uh, for these going in the mid sixes and so on. And in some cases, not even worn. So you can find these watches. And I think it's a great alternative to uh, going out and spending, I don't know, the high teens for the Daytona equivalent. And certainly if uh, you're a bigger chap and you have a more substantial or muscular wrist, you might find the Daytona is a little disappointing and in that department. And again, if you wear leather jackets and ripped jeans and cowboy boots and have a bit of stubble going on or even a little bit of beard or goatee, maybe this might be your version of a blingy watch. And that's it, guys. I haven't done an unboxing in ages, and that's a shitload of fun. I'll start doing more of these now in the coming uh, weeks. Let me just go back through it. This is the Nomadic, the Mirai. This is the date version, but there is a version with no date. Beautiful, slim, elegant, and affordable dive watch from Ireland, Northern Ireland. The next best thing to the Republic. <laughs> the lads there in Belfast, absolutely great. And once again, Amiral de Bechevelle, or if you want to spend a bit more money, just get Chateau de Bechevel, the lowering of the sails. Pretty good stuff. I'm off to make a steak that'll go really, really well with this wine. Thanks for watching the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.